we might as well start calling you Nostradamus here and there because you were definitely right a couple about a couple things. And I know, I think two, three weeks ago, you said, you know, this fan base is about to be split. And you know what? Look at this. Here we are. Um, even coming off of a victory last week, I have never seen this fan base more at a civil war than it currently is. I mean, you have the people that absolutely love Justin Fields no matter what. They'll lay out every single reason to sit there and back up Justin Fields and give him no credibility for any of his faults, but give him all credibility for all of his successes. And then you have the other side that is just completely bashing Justin Fields, wants him gone as soon as possible, and doesn't believe in him no matter what, doesn't think that he can pan out or progress into anything more than he has been. And the people in the middle, like me and you, man, we are the few. You know, I know in our personal conversations, we've said, like, you know, no matter what happens, we're going to be a little upset. No matter what happens, we're going to be a little happy. Because, to be honest with you, all these possibilities are possible and there's ups and downs to every single scenario and it's in the worst ways too where i personally have flip-flopped on what's the best thing for this team in the last five days every day i switch opinions and we'll text each other and i'm like man caleb williams is the way to go and then it's you know hey it's all about just building draft capital and trade back this pick because it's the right move to do and all these things in a certain lens are going to be the right thing to do. Whoever, whoever ends up being right, right? Whoever ends up being the, I supported Fields and now he's balling somewhere else. I told you Caleb Williams is a flop. None of you know. None of us know. No one knows. And that's why the NFL is the NFL. If you approach things from like just a logical perspective, you can at least have some like good discussions about what's the future and what's going to happen. But I have had a little bit of, moment of clarity on Justin Fields in the sense of I texted you on Sunday and I said, I think this was just the most Justin Fields game that we've come to expect in his career. I just saw this on Twitter and I don't remember exactly who it was. So I apologize, but like it was Justin Fields aggregate of statistics was something near like 15 for 27. So right around 50%, 175 passing yards, one touchdown, one pick, and then like 10 carries for 50 yards and then maybe a touchdown here and there. And I, I looked at those numbers and I just, they look fine, but that's about it. And that was kind of my realization on the Cardinals game is you can make all these excuses and there will be, and most of them are valid. And I hate Luke gets as much as the next guy. Da, 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 da. But what if this is just Justin Fields? What if this is exactly what he is? And wherever he goes, this is what he's going to be. A 50% completion guy, one touchdown, one interception, and a rushing touchdown here and there. And it's it's one of those questions of, like, is that enough to get you where you need to go? The stats against the Cardinals, I mean, literally 15 for 27, 55% completion, 170 yards, one touchdown, one pick, nine carries for 97 yards with one rushing touchdown. So, I mean, it's – Right there with what you're saying. However, that's against the worst defense in the NFL as well. One of the things I found interesting was um, my brother-in-law, Patrick, who he's he's a fan of the podcast. He listens, so he'll appreciate the shout-out. He said something that was very smart. And um, we were talking to my father-in-law, his father, and he goes, what do you guys think of Justin Fields? And Patrick said, you know, he goes, I think he's just just a tad above you can win with. Yeah. And I, I was like, that, that. that's really such good. a perfect, perfect way to explain it. And that's because of the rushing element and the rushing touchdowns. You know, that gives you kind of like a little little edge there. But other than that, those are very, very pedestrian, mediocre stats. I like that what Patrick says. It's like, it's not, he's, he, he's never going to be the reason you do win, right? Like, he's never going to be the reason that why you won, but he's good enough to be a contributor to winning, I suppose. I don't know. Because somebody will see this and then call us out that we don't think Justin Fields is good. Like, I think Justin Fields is really good. I think somewhere down the line, he's going to be like a good quarterback. I don't know, like maybe not great or whatever. Maybe he will be. Like, this is the funny thing about this is I think Justin Fields is the definition also. And, it, and again, like I'm trying to stay in the middle and trying to have these realizations in real time, but not overreact to my own thoughts, right? 
And I, I watch Justin Fields and I, I, all I see is a guy that some coach somewhere, some team for the next five years will not give up on. Justin Fields will have a career until he's 35 years old if he wants it on potential alone. If I could just get him to stop doing this one thing, if I could just get him to stop doing this one thing, stop taking big hits, if I could get him to just teach him how to throw over the middle, how to read the progression, how to like zip it in and teach him some, like there's always going to be that excuse. And I think when you talk about Justin Fields' excuses, because you, you, since the beginning of the season, have called out the accountability on the players more, and I've been a little bit more on the coaching. And 17 weeks later, I think we're both dead on right. I think the coaching is very bad and we can see it. And that's what stands out. And that's why people will give Justin Fields so many passes. But like, this isn't a, this isn't a week to week thing where Justin Fields makes one mistake. He makes the same mistake a lot, right? Like it's not a, it's not a game changing mistake usually, which is why you can get away with it. But I think at this point, we've said this a lot all year, but we know what the floor is on fields. And I think it's this, right? Like this is about the floor. I think you're not going to see many more 80 yard passing games from Justin Fields like we saw early in his career, but I don't know how many 250 yard passing games we're going to see moving forward. And that sounds sustainable. And that sounds pretty good for a winning team overall, but I don't know, man. Like when you, got, I'd rather have three fifty in the air and zero on the ground, because you got guys like Jake Browning and Joe Flacco throwing for three fifty, four hundred yards week to week, and and it's it, they make it look not that hard. If I was a coach, I would be that guy. I, I am that guy. If he could just stop doing this one thing, the potential is there. Like I see it. That's that's why I've been a huge field supporter since they won. However, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and argue against results. I'm not going to sit here and just mm. be insane just because I like the guy, right? So e- even earlier this year in the Kansas City game, we had 99 yards passing. So early in his career, yeah, but no, we, we've seen an example of that this year still, right? And you're right. Like, my idea was that he needs to be thrown for at least 200 yards a game in if he's going to attempt this style of offense. Now, I actually kind of like the way they use them a little bit more. Like, I think the Mercedes Lewis touchdown is a great example of using his mobility the way it should be used. You know, let him get out to the edge. And if nothing's there, then let him try and scamper around up the field. There was a play um, as well towards the end of the game where he rushed and he managed to kind of like get a little edge and just pick up 30, 40 yards on the ground. You know, that that's the type of running he should be doing. But once again, I'll sound like a broken record to you. I've said it before games when we have conversations before games. I've said it kind of all year. The one thing this team has proven to me is that they're inconsistent. So I believe the one thing I can expect is inconsistency. So the true question is, going into next year, what reason makes you believe that all of a sudden this inconsistency is going to get fixed? Right? Because if you're going to march in there with the same quarterback, the same coaching staff. Why wouldn't you not expect more of the same? 